Since you guys seem to like my other video so much, the longest forced mate in a professional game, if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out now. I'm doing another one. This video is going to be the hardest chess puzzle ever. If you play chess, you'll know that every puzzle has a corresponding difficulty rating. So it's hard to determine the hardest puzzle ever, but while doing research for this video, I came across this puzzle and I loved its story. While scouring the internet for anything that could lead me to the world's hardest puzzle, I came across a single post on a Game Not forum from user Makaidi. I'll have the post and everything I used linked below in the description and I'll have it posted right here. This is a chess problem steeped in legend. <laughs> Bang or start. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, the year is 1987. The location, Brussels. Some of the strongest players in the world, including recently crowned world champion Kasparov, are participating in one of the biggest tournaments of the year. Even the world champ must work very hard just to keep pace with Karpov and Lujovic, both on the top of their games. Also playing are famous grandmasters such as Jan Timmen, Viktor Korchnoi, Bent Larsen, Nigel Short, and the living legend Mikhail Tal. Darting in and out of the press rooms are all manners of GMs. Suddenly, in pops Jim Plaskett. Spoiler. A young and intense British grandmaster. In between telling jokes and talking politics, he sets up the most intriguing position. White to play and win, he pronounces, and then departs leaving the position as a parting gift? Or perhaps one should say a parting shot. I don't, really, I don't know what that part means. For several hours, chess fans, GMs alike, try their hand at unraveling Plaskett's mysterious puzzle. While some of them apparently make progress in the analysis, no one can completely work out the complexities of this deceptively deep position. Even the computers choke on it, which is, that's true, that's true. Some of the chess.com computers can't see one of the biggest moves, and it's pretty sick. The tournament was a tie between Lejovic and Kasparov, both with 8.5 out of 11, but Misha proved his genius in a way that other GMs could not. After struggling with the puzzle for a few minutes, Tal left the playing hall to take a walk. An hour later, after some fresh air, the wizard from Riga popped back in and immediately played the correct solution on the board. A variation so subtle and beautiful that it stunned all who witnessed it. Did I not say this story was absolutely wild? So what is the true origin of this puzzle? Hmm? You might be wondering. The best we can determine was invented by Dutch composer Gies van Brooklyn. I don't know. I'm not even going to try to pretend I know that one. Sometime around 1970. Instead of publishing it, he merely showed it to some friends. Being so incredible, it found its way through the grapevine into Grandmaster Circles. By word of mouth, it found its way to Spassky and later to Plaskett. In 1997, Brooklyn finally decided to publish it in the Dutch chess magazine. Um, in one of the... Br in, in the Dutch chess magazine. Immediate apologies, as I know I butchered a million names and did not even say the magazine from the Netherlands. <laughs> but without further ado, let's get into Plaskett's puzzle. Right away, we can see that black is way up in material. They have three pass pawns. Two of them are barreling down, ready to promote, and a, a fourth semi-protected pawn that could be a nuisance later on. Now, white does have their own pass pawn ready to promote, but we do need to be wary of this knight fork they have. We also have two checks, knight f6 and bishop c2 check. If we play bishop c2 check, they have king g7, and once we take on e3 with our knight, there is nothing left for white to do. Black will probably still win this game. That leaves us with only one option, and that's knight f6 check. From here, the king has a couple places they can go. They can go king h8, but that's mate in four after we make a queen on d8. They can go king g6, but after bishop c2 check, and they take our knight, we can make another queen with check. So their best possible move right now is king g7. White now has two forcing moves here. We have knight h5 and knight e8. After the latter, there is king f8, and there's nothing really left for us to do. They want king c6, but I think it's like plus 15, almost plus 16 for black. So what we need to do is knight h5 check. But here black faces the same problems as before. They cannot go to the 8th rank or we will make a queen. They cannot go to f7 or they lose their forking capabilities and we will make a queen. And they cannot go to h7 because it is a mate in 5. Their best move, king g6. So this next move is the move that is really tough for computers to find for whatever reason. I'm not sure how engines work to be honest. But as you can see the bar is like plus 6 almost for black. And it's not even a suggested move for white. 
but it's bishop c2 check. And here black is almost forced to take because they're still facing those same problems. You can't go to f7 because you're blocking your knight and we will make a queen. And if you try to block with your knight, we will still take it and hit you with the same check, forcing you to take anyways. Our next move is promoting to a queen, even though the fork is still there. Now I'm gonna put a little disclaimer here because this puzzle is technically flawed and this move will show you why. They actually have king g4 and there's not a lot of ways to win for white. There's a bunch of lines where we will eventually win this pawn and, and maybe this knight that are undefended, but we've completely equalized the material and uh, you know the game is not lost. It's plus four for white. We have a queen. Everything's looking nice. That being said, that's not the intended way for the puzzle. The intended way was for knight f7 check to win our queen. What's even crazier is the eval bar now says it's plus 13 for black and after king e6 attacking the knight, it switches immediately to mate and 10. The knight is pretty much forced to take the queen with check, and then we go king f5, blocking their king entirely in this little square, and a lone little bishop that might be able to do something like checkmate it. Here's a perfect time to pause the video and try and figure out this force mate 9. Put your answer in the comments below, and please consider liking and subscribing if this video was fun or helpful to you in any way. Uh, I really like making these kinds of videos. So let me know what you want to see next. If you want me to evaluate games or anything like that, just let me know in the comments below. Now, obviously, we want to get the bishop to d1. Their first move obviously has to be to block that with e2. We cannot go there. They will take back. But now we have a fun move, bishop e4, which is just threatening f3 checkmate, the same thing entirely, to which black's best response is an under promotion to knight on the e1 square, protecting the f3 square. Our lone bishop isn't done yet. We head up to bishop d5 in an attempt to reroute our piece in order to hit that checkmate. Their best move is c2, protected by the knight, in order to stop this bishop b3, but we have bishop c4 attempting to go to e2 mate. And their best move again is to under promote to a knight again to prevent us from going to this square. But that's okay because our bishop is still on its journey to bishop b5 in an attempt to hit bishop e8 checkmate or even go down to a4 and hit this d1 checkmate. What does black do? They have to stop it with knight c6 preventing our bishop from hitting the e8 mate. It also prevents us from going to a4 early as they will have a check and then I don't know they can do whatever but as soon as our king moves their king can escape. So we have to take, uh, and there is no harm in doing so. We're now threatening checkmate again. The only thing they can do is knight c7. While this certainly does stop us from going to e8, it does not stop us from going backwards, just like I said earlier, to a4, trying to hit this d1 mate, and they do have a few attempts left in them with knight c2, bishop takes c2, and oh my god, we're so close. Uh, now they have knight e2, but after bishop d1, there is no move they can do. There is no check they can do. So any other move they do will just end in bishop takes e2 checkmate. And that's the Plaskett puzzle. If you guys like that, please feel free to let me know of any other puzzles or games you'd like me to analyze or anything along those lines. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching.